Hello everybody, Mo here, and in this uh, video I'm going to be going over a deck guide or making a deck guide for my Yasuo deck that I've been playing for the first couple of days of open beta and Legends of Runeterra. So a couple of people have asked for this and I've even had somebody ask for personal coaching on it, so I coached him as a viewer on how to play the deck in a Discord like video call. And we ended up going 14-2 and two, uh, on the night, and he climbed fairly quickly. So, well, as quickly as you can climb with their ranked system. <laughs> so, in this video, we're going to go over how the deck wins, the purpose of each card, how to play the early game, and how to play the mid to late game with the deck. Uh, because I feel like, from what I've heard people talk about, and when I talked to this person I coached, a lot of people aren't really playing this deck correctly, and are, a lot of people have uh, how to play this deck not right in their mind, so they go into the games with a game plan that's not really correct, and because of that, they just lose over and over again, it's very frustrating. So I'm going to go and tell you guys how I play the deck and how this uh, version is intended to be played. So let's go ahead and go over the first thing, which is how this deck wins. So the way I've played this deck and the way I uh, specifically built this deck and teched it to win is you usually just try to live early game. So we have a bunch of early game creatures in here and I jammed a bunch of two and three drop creatures to ensure that we don't die early game to all of the Elise decks, the Dawn Speaker decks, your aggressive Zed and Katarina decks, as well as some of your more aggressive uh, Demacian Elite decks. So I'll go over which cards uh, specifically help you in that uh, in a moment. But just know that uh, your main goal is you want to try and live early game, just survive. Mid game, try and land a Yasuo, but if you don't have a Yasuo, that's fine. Because you have other mid game options that make you survive. For instance, you can play Legion General, who does not have to be a 10 10 in order for you to play him. Just playing him as a 5 mana 7 7 or a 5 mana 6 6 is good enough to block any other 5 mana creature most of the time. Or at least block, you know, 2 creatures to get a nice 2 for 1. Minotaur Reckoner is really nice at stalling the board also. And eventually, you just want to stall until you can either win with Yasuo, like play Yasuo, and start killing off all of their creatures with a board wipe with Yasuo plus Intimidating Roar, or Yasuo plus, you know, Mina Swiftfoot or Minotaur Reckoner. Or, a lot of times, I don't even win with Yasuo on the field or play Yasuo. I kind of just play my creatures and make really big legion generals and on my turn play an intimidating roar, stop all of their creatures from blocking, and then just attack you with two to four, you know, just really big creatures and just kind of one-shot you. Uh, a lot of the decks being played right now, the most common deck I've played against is the Elise deck. So they play a bunch of uh, little spiders. And because of this, you know, legion general has fearsome, so at the end of their turn, if you just play a really big spider, none of their creatures can block it. If it's if your Legion General is over 10 power, you win in two turns. You just have to find ways to not die to the spiders by blocking it or doing whatever. So you don't really need to focus more on the Yasuo aspect and on the stunning aspect and on, oh, I need a hard mulligan for Yasuo, I need a hard mulligan for these stun spells. So like that, you really more or less need to hard mulligan for... The early game cards to make sure you can survive and kill their early game so that way mid game when you do draw your your yasuo it's fine or if you don't draw it you're still fine because i'm sure you're going to draw something better so that's really how i play the deck out and now we're going to go over the purpose of every card in this deck just so you can guys can get the best possible idea of how to play the deck so first off we're going to talk about um the champion so yasuo because uh, I feel like he's really good at the tempo game. You play your Yasuo on turn 4, you can have 3 spell mana to instantly start killing things. And a lot of people are scared of him, so most of the time you can get them to spend resources or make trades that are pretty ideal for you anyway. So if they 2 for 1 your Yasuo or 3 for 1 your Yasuo, yeah, that's still a win for you. Like, your Yasuo is pretty good in this deck and is important, but it's not if you don't have your Yasuo on the field you lose the game instantly type of deck. That's definitely a, a plus to having Yasuo. Um, and he's really your only board wipe for bigger creatures because you play Yasuo with Intimidating Roar. And that 
is a really nice board wipe for things that are kind of bigger to mid game. Uh, especially if you have him leveled up, he'll kill just about everything with four or less power. Um, and we'll go over all of the different combinations you can do with Yasuo later on. So uh, the next follower, we're going to talk about uh, the followers now. And so here is Fade Blade Twirler. Now Fade Blade Twirler is one of your actual win conditions on how you win the game. With their first strike ability or quick attack, they get really big really fast, especially if you play a card like Intimidating Roar. For instance, I've had two uh, Fade Blade Twirlers on the battlefield before, and my opponent had a board full of 1-1 one -one spiders or 2-1 spiders. Um, like, literally a board full of them. Well, if they have six 1-1 one -one spiders on the board, or if they just have six s smaller creatures, you know that they can't play any more creatures after that. So it's safe to go on to your turn. You play Intimidating Roar. It stuns all six of their creatures. You have two Fey Blade Twirlers on the battlefield. They're each going to gain 12 power because it just saw six creatures get stunned. So now you have two 13 threes with first strike and your opponent can't block with any creatures and you can just one shot your opponent fairly quickly. And this combo can come out as soon as I believe turn four. It can come out on turn four. If your opponent fills up the entire board with spiders or fills up the entire board with smaller creatures, you can go turn two, blade twirler, turn three, blade twirler, save uh, a spell mana, and then on turn four, you'll have your four mana and then your one extra spell mana to be able to intimidating roar. And then you'll be able to stun your opponent's entire board and then just attack with your two uh, 13 threes. Now, of course, that only works if your opponent manages to fill up their board. But yeah, these things, if you get two of them out, can kill as early as a turn four combo with Intimidating Roar. So these really just uh, help you win the game because they grow really fast, especially with cards like Minotaur Reckoner. They synergize well with uh, uh, the Arkanoid Century, and they synergize really well with Intimidating Roar. Uh, the next follow we're going to talk about is House Spider. Now, House Spider is probably the second best card against aggressive decks especially against decks like the spider deck and decks like your elite decks that you play against because the house spider deck gives you two bodies and when you're playing against the elite decks they're going to be making for the most part one ones on early game so you make a two two and now all of a sudden you have a two two that can block two creatures and a one one that can trade with any spider now whenever they buff their spiders they usually are only giving their spiders plus attack so even though their spider can be a five one your 1-1 one, one spider that you get off of house spider is still good enough to block and trade with that creature. So this just gives you really good early game. The 2-2 two, two having plus 2 power can block any 2-mana 3-2 that your opponent plays. It can block a 1-mana 3-2 that your opponent plays. Um, it just gives you really good blockers and multiple blockers against uh, early game creatures and ag aggressive decks. The next follow we're going to talk about is Shadow Assassin. Now, Shadow Assassin is really just a blocker. She's really just sometimes can be a win condition through elusive uh, but most of the time i kind of just play her on turn three when i need to block an elusive creature whether your opponent plays a shadow assassin your opponent plays the two one that gets really big every time they summon a minion you know the shadow assassin can block that fairly easily and in the process it also draws you a card closer so you kind of play her early game and you she draws you into your mid game cards most of the time is how she plays so she replaces herself so you don't ever lose card advantage and then you can block with it to try and stay alive so you can play more cards later on your arkanoid century or Arachnoid century or however you say this your spider i just call it the spider uh your spider is very simple you just use it to stun a creature uh, it can usually be done on your opponent's turn so if they play a creature before they attack you can usually use arkanoid century to stun as their biggest unit so they can't attack or if you have a yusuo on the field you can just use this card to pick off any creature you want and just start uh, point and click kill creatures it's just a nice uh, early game blocker since it has three power it's nice to block fearsome creatures if you notice the other creatures we just covered um, don't have three powers so none of them can block fearsome as well as the other uh, three mana follower we're about to talk about scaled snapper most of the time, it's only going to have two powers. So your Arknoid Sentry is really good at having three powers so it can block creatures that have Fearsome. As well as, um, it kind of just comes down stuns, gives 
Blade Twirlers, some extra power, maybe kill something off when you have Yasuo, and then it's just a blocker after that. Now, the next follow we're going to talk about is Scaled Snapper. He's probably the best, not probably, he's the best early game unit you could play. At being a 3-mana 2-5, it comes down the same turn as your opponent's Zed comes down. It's a 2-5, so it blocks your opponent's Zed, because you know, Zed has quick attack, so or usually your Zed just gets to attack for free, and there's nothing your opponent can really do about it on turn 3. Well, with Scaled Snapper being a 2-5, your opponent has to now have Zed and have a pump spell for it to not die to Scaled Snapper. On top of that, against the Spider deck, if you ever play against an Elise deck with Scaled Snapper, this card easily, uh, what, 3 for 1's your opponent. So you easily can block 3 creatures with it, which is insane value. And the better, or the something else that's really good about it, is if you're playing against an Elite deck, or some type of Freljord deck, and you need it to become 5 power to block, it can do that too. So it's really good at blocking Garen's, it's good at blocking Avaros and Hearth Guards. Um, it's just good at blocking larger creatures just in general, because you can also flip to have five power and make them scared to attack. The next follower is Legion General. This is usually your game closer, or something that's really good in the elite decks. Against the elite decks, you want to play this card as probably about a 6-6 six, six or a 7-7. Seven, seven. As long as you can play it a 6-6, six, six, then it can block any of the elites fairly well, and you'll be good to go it can usually two for one your opponent and that's really what you're looking for in those mid-range creature matchups you just want your creature to be able to do more than their creatures and in the elise deck it's a really good game closer you want to play him wait until he's kind of bigger most of the time probably about a 7 7 an 8 8 or a 9 9 possibly a 10 10 because it's really hard for the spider decks to block the legion general so he if you can get him to at least a 10 10 you have the chance of just killing them in two turns, which is nice because that applies pressure. The Minotaur Reckoner is the next follower, and this card's really, really good with Yasuo and without Yasuo. So even without Yasuo, it's still just buying you time. That's all everything in this deck does is buy you time until you get set up to one-shot your opponent or set up for a complete board wipe. And, I mean, this de this card does it all, especially when you have a Fey Blade Twirler and... On the field, your Blade Twirler is just gaining power every single turn, so your attacks are stronger. If you have Yasuo on the field, it's, you know, dealing two damage to a creature every turn. And because it, start, it stuns the weakest creature, most of the time when you play Yasuo and Minotaur Reckoner, if your Yasuo is not leveled up, since your Reckoner is stunning the weakest enemy, your Yasuo is still usually killing it because the weak enemies usually don't have too much toughness. So the two damage is usually enough to kill it, and then by the time you start stunning the really big creatures when your opponent runs out of small creatures, your Yasuo should level up, and then he starts dealing five damage to all of your opponent's decent to big creatures. As well as Minotaur Reckoner is a 6-6 body, so he can block or attack most of the time very well. Usually I use him to block. I don't like attacking with him unless it's just super free. Um, but he block, he can block fairly well. I mean, he can block a 4-4, four, four, a 3-3 three, three fairly safely, and of course anything... Um, that's weaker than that. And then the last follower we're going to talk about is Mina Swiftfoot. Now this card is kind of your just like ace in the hole late game bomb against any mid-range deck. Um, so the reason I play this over Yone, a lot of people ask me, uh, isn't Yone better? It comes down on turn 7. I believe Yone is bigger and he stuns 2 units. Is If you stun 2 units with Yone, then your opponent still gets to play a unit because they get priority back. And those 2 units are still on the field. For the next turn, um, my argument for playing Mina Swiftfoot is usually if you're in a position where you can play Yon, you'll also live to 9 mana to be able to play the Swiftfoot. And with Mina Swiftfoot, uh, even if you don't have your Suo, you can bounce three creatures on, let's say, your attack step. Say it goes to your turn, and you have the attack token. You can play Mina Swiftfoot and bounce three of your opponent's creatures. Now, your opponent still gets priority and can still play one creature, However, you can just instantly attack after that, and he has to spend their they have to spend their next turn replaying the other two creatures if they choose to do so. So whenever it goes to their attack turn, if they want to play those creatures to attack, it gives you priority to now play blockers or to react with a slow spell or something like that, instead of Yon just stunning them on your turn, and if you don't kill them, when it goes to your opponent's turn, they can just instantly attack you again, and you're just under more pressure. Anytime you can stop your opponent from being able to just straight up attack you, 
if you can either make them have to play something or give you priority in some sort of way to play a extra creature to block or an extra slow spell, that's always really, really good for this deck. Because, I mean, just think about Intimidating Roar. Like, you, if you can stop your entire... Uh, your opponent's entire team from attacking you obviously you want to do that but most of the time they're just going to go straight into attack so you don't get to use this very often so you want to kind of try and force your opponent to play more pressure or more creatures on the board or a spell or something to try and give them just more um, power there are more ways to kill you or get a better trade and minus plus foot is really good at doing that and then so it just allows you to get more stuff done on their next turn so that's it for the followers. Now we're going to talk about the spells. Guile. Guile has actually been pretty good for me. I really thought about changing Guile out for a recall. I thought maybe keeping one Guile and going to one recall. And uh, every time I play Guile, it's just really, really good. I mean, you don't really use it early game, but late in the game. Like I said, if your opponent ever plays a creature before they attack, Guile's good. Um, when it's your attack turn, something I like to do is intimidating roar my entire opponent's board and let's say they have five creatures so you can intimidating roar but then they get to play another creature afterwards if they play a creature after to still block you to stop you from winning now you can play a guile to stun that last creature or you can play a the spider the arkanoid sentry as well but guile can do it too it just ups your chances of having it so you can stun the final sixth creature and then now your opponent has no blockers and then you go ahead and win the game so it's really good on your on your turn after your opponent plays a creature to block, you can just instantly stun it with Guile. Now, the only difference between this deck list and the deck list in my YouTube video is I took out the two Ripper Shapers and I added one Death Lotus and I added a second Intimidating Roar. Because the most common deck played is an Elise deck, so it plays a bunch of 1-1 one -one spiders, and that's why you have Death Lotus in your deck. The next card, you know, is Death Lotus, so that was a segue, by the way. Um... And Death Lotus is very straightforward. It deals one damage to all attacking creatures. Your opponent plays a bunch of one toughness creatures, spiders, and you kill them. Death Lotus. Next is Deny. You play Deny because Deny is insanely good, and any Ionia deck should be playing Deny. It stops a lot of things. It can stop triggers from happening, so it can stop She Who Wonder abilities. It can stop the Shadow Isle 7 cost card. When it comes in, it kills two units of yours. You can stop that from happening. You can stop four Demacias from happening. Deny is just really good. I don't think that needs much explanation. Uh, the things you want to deny, I guess, are anything that can completely change the game. So anything that kills your creatures, anything that makes your opponent win the game, or anything that stops you from winning the game are usually what you want to deny. Um, next we have Steel Tempest. This one is also very straightforward. Your opponent tries to attack you. You stop them from attacking. Don't be afraid to use this without Yasuo. Just go and buy you some time. It's really good. I see a lot of people save all of their stun cards for when they have Yasuo, and I don't think that's correct at all. Your main goal is just to live until late game. So if you are, your opponent's attacking you with like a 5-5 or attacking you with a really big ephemeral creature on like turn 3 or turn 2 or something, just go ahead and steal Tempest. It. Don't worry about it. Next is Culling Strike. So this card is uh, a really nice kill spell early game. It kills Elise on turn 2. It kills Braum. It's most of the time I use it to kill Braum and Braum decks. And the most important card you want to save this for is if you're Elise, playing against the Elise Dawnspeaker's deck, so the Demacian Shadow Isle deck, you want to save this card for Dawnspeaker because it's really your only answer to that card. And Dawnspeaker right now is absolutely broken. It comes down on turn 3, and after turn 3 it just starts pumping up all of your opponent's creatures forever. So... It's really good at dealing with stuff like that. That never attacks. It kind of just sits back and just gains your opponent infinite value. It says, hey, you know, kill this. Next is Will of Ionia. So this card is most of the time going to be used as a savior for your Yasuo or a savior for your Reckoner or Legion General or anything like that. So most of the time I find myself, like I said, my the opponent tries to use Black Spear on my Yasuo or tries to kill my Yasuo or kill a very important creature. Just bounce it back to your hand. And then replay it, and you'll be fine. Cards like Legion General, if you can bounce it back to your hand, let's say when you played it, you only stunned two creatures, so it's a 6-6. Six, six. Well, let's say you've stunned a couple more since then. If you bounce it back to your hand, you can replay it as a 9-9 nine nine or something you know, even bigger and apply more pressure. That's also a really nice trick you can do if your opponent has a full board of uh, like smaller creatures. And let's say your opponent's at 9 health, but your Legion General's only a 6-6 six, six when you played it. You can bounce it back to your hand, 
play it as a 9-9, and then on your turn you can just attack. And that's a really nice uh, trick you can do. And the very last card in the deck is Intimidating Roar. This is basically just a board wipe. You pair this with Yasuo about 90% of the time. Um, probably most of the time you pair it with Yasuo as a nice board wipe, but you can also, like I said earlier, use Intimidating Roar on your attack step and stun all of your opponent's creatures, and then when they go to play the last creature, you can drop the spider or guile, stun the very last creature, and then just attack with your entire board, and usually push for some decent damage, and usually kill them. So that's going to be the purpose for each card. And now we're just going to go over a quick um, just like simulation type of like how to play in the early game. So in the early game, you just want to live. Like that's probably the mantra with this deck, is live until late game. Live until you can play Big General or live until Yasuo. So you typically... I don't play Blade Twirler on turn 2 most of the time unless uh, my opponent's playing a Spider deck and I know I'm not going to be able to attack effectively or I'm always going to be on the back foot for the first couple of turns because a 2-mana 1-3 is really nice at blocking you know, at least 2 Spiders. And if they kill it, that's fine. Like If they waste a Black Spear on it, that's fine. Think of any time they use a removal spell on your Blade Twirler that's one less removal spell on your Yasuo or your Legion General. So sometimes I'll use Blade Twirler as a bait for um, kill spells. So that way my Yasuo can guarantee live in a matchup that is really important in. So I usually don't slam Blade Twirler on turn two. Uh, most of the time, I don't play any card on turn two unless they're being hyper aggressive and I have a House Spider. I kind of just save the spell mana. So usually it goes turn one, play nothing. Turn two, most of the time play nothing. So turn three, you have spell mana. And I try and keep spell mana available at all times. Um, but obviously, if you're forced to use it, don't be afraid to use it. Um, the only time I really play House Spider on turn two is if my opponent went turn one creature, turn two creature. And then I'll play a House Spider and start blocking because I don't want to take a whole bunch of damage. Uh, turn three, you're usually trying to play a Scaled Snapper. Um, if you don't have a scaled snapper and you have a shadow assassin as long as you have three spell mana i would go ahead and play any three drop creature really um not the spider so i'd either play the assassin or the snapper that way uh you're using your mana efficiently and you're not wasting any mana uh most of the time i would say like 80 percent of the time if you're playing scaled snapper on turn two you just make it a two five the only times you don't is if you're playing a, against a control deck which in that case you make it a five two or um later in the game if you play it on like turn five or something and your opponent has a garen or an avaros and hearth guard or something with uh, five toughness then i would play it as a five two but most of the time you're going to be playing it as a nice three mana two five and that blocks anything on that turn then you just go through the motions for the next probably two to three turns you're just going to try and stun a couple creatures maybe play your yasuo you're going to try and not take damage you're not really attacking early game uh, you can get, if you have a Blade Twirler and it's probably like a 3-3 or a 5-3, you can get in free attacks with your Blade Twirler. Um, if you play your Yasuo, I, you can attack with Yasuo, but I'd be very wary against specific decks that have, um, like, combat tricks. So, for instance, your opponent can either buff their creature or if your opponent can frostbite your Yasuo. Because if your Yasuo dies in a way like that, you're going to feel really dumb. And it's it's kind of like, oh, I just threw away my Yasuo for no reason. Like, oh, what, what was I going to get in four damage, like... Four damage isn't anything, really, if you think about it in the scheme of things. Late game, you're going to be playing 9-9 creatures, so the four damage isn't going to matter sometimes. But if it looks like it's a free attack, your opponent isn't playing a pump deck, like if they're playing a Shadow Isle deck or something, um, maybe you can get in for a free attack with Yasuo. Just keep in mind that if your opponent's creature dies in a Shadow Isle deck, it activates you know their kill spells, stuff like that. So just be kind of wary about attacking with Yasuo. Most of the time, I don't attack until I have... A big legion general in the field so yeah usually you just want to try and live for the first five to six turns and then on turn six i almost always try to play minotaur reckoner just to start stabilizing the board um if my options are like play minotaur reckoner and not have spell mana or play legion general and have spell mana i probably play legion general and have spell mana i always want to make my legion general one more uh power and toughness bigger than my opponent's biggest creature now in every deck that's different so in Demacia decks and the elite type decks, you know that their biggest creatures, for the most part, unbuffed, are going to be 5-5s. Five so they play 5-mana, five 5-5 five five tough creature, they play the 6-mana, five 5-5 five tough lifesteal creature, and then they play Garen. All those are 5-5, five five, so you want to make your Legion General a 6-6 six six against that deck, so that way he can effectively block two creatures. Against the Spider deck, um, none of their creatures are very big ever, so you just want to make him probably just like a 5-5 five five that's probably fine, or a 6-6. Six six. 
is probably fine. Um, if you are an immediate threat and you need to play him on turn 5 or turn 6, that's fine. Just try and make him a 5-5 five, five, or 6-6. Six, six. Most of the time, if I'm not under any pressure at all, I'll try and wait until he's probably like an 8-8 eight, eight or a 9-9. Nine, nine. And then I'll go ahead and play him as an 8-8 eight, eight or a 9-9 nine, nine and try and end the game over the course of 2 turns. Assuming you hit your opponent for 2 damage at any point in time in the game, like maybe with 1 free Blade Twirler attack or something like that, then your Legion General can end the game in 2 hits. That's always a nice uh, power and toughness to play him at. And then you just kind of go through the motions after that. You want to start removing the board with your Yasuo uh, Minotaur Reckoner combo or your Yasuo Intimidating Groar. And once you uh, clear the board of your opponent's creatures, then you start winning because all of your creatures are going to be much bigger than most people's creatures towards the end of the game. The last thing we're going to cover here is mulligans. Uh, I know I forgot to say this in the intro, but we are going to cover mulligans here because I feel like that's extremely important. important. So I'm just going to cover the main decks that I've played against here. So the main decks that I played against that I feel like were actual reasonable decks and not just starter decks or something like that is the first one we're going to cover is the Elise deck. So this is the deck I've played against the most. Uh, this is uh, supposedly the quote-unquote best deck at the moment. So we are going to go ahead and do a test hand here, and I'm going to tell you what I would mulligan away and what to look for. So just in general, against the Elise deck, you just want to look for your Scaled Snapper. You want If it's the Demacian version, you want to try and find your Culling Strike so you can kill their Dawn Speaker. And after the Scaled Snapper and the Culling Strike, really just any early game creature after that. And then you'll eventually draw into late game. My general rules of... Uh, Mulliganing is I almost never keep a Steel Tempest. Uh, you never really keep a Deny unless you're against a, a Control deck or a, I guess a deck that you know you're going to need Deny, but so far it's only been Control decks and I haven't played against too many of those. So uh, I don't keep very many spells ever in my opening hand unless it's Culling Strike uh, or if I'm playing against an Elise deck Death Lotus. So we're going to go and do an opening hand here. So this hand would be not very bad against... Uh, an Elise deck because you have this opener you would want to get rid of both of your Steel Tempest and if it's the Dawn Speaker version so if it's the Demacia Shadow Isle version you would go ahead and get rid of your Suo um, because they're not going to be attacking too much if it's not the Dawn Speaker version if it's the more I'm going to play more creatures version you can keep your Suo so we're going to assume it's the Dawn Speaker version here we're going to reroll and this hand is absolutely nutty because well, I mean, you get two Scaled Snappers, so that's going to, like, four for one your opponent, make it impossible for them to get through early game. They're probably going to get frustrated and use a Black Spear on at least one of them, and if they do that, then that's one less Black Spear for your Yasuo. And Blade Twirler is also a really nice blocker early game for things. Um, the only main problem you have here is they play a one-mana Fearsome Spider, as well as Elise has Spears, uh, Fearsome. So it could be kind of hard to block those. But as far as just blocking anything that's not a Lisa or that specific spider, you'll have a pretty you know free time against them. Uh, we'll do a deck against just the Elise Noxus version that doesn't play Dawn Speaker. So this hand is really good. You never want two Yusuos in your opening hand. So because they're the Noxus version goes a lot wider and plays more wide uh, mid range creatures, you're gonna want to keep the Yusuo and start stunning away the stuff like the three two spider he plays and just more creatures mid game. So we can keep both Scaled Snappers and just reroll that. And this is a nice Elusive card. This Elusive card gets you two chip damage in and can also just block and refill your hand. So this hand is pretty decent too. Um, the only thing, you might have Mulligan away one Scaled Snapper since they do go a lot wider. Or I'm sorry, they go a lot bigger than the Dawn Speaker deck. You can maybe have changed that in for a Guile. Um, that's not that good, but you know you have Yasuo in hand, so maybe that kills something at game. But I probably would have kept the two Scaled Snappers. Um, and then we're going to go against uh, the second deck or second archetype that I played against the second most was going to be the elite deck. So this is Freljord, Demacian most of the time, and it just plays a bunch of creatures. It just plays a bunch of elite creatures, um, and they just try and overwhelm you with bigger creatures or constantly having threats. That that deck is literally the definition of a mid-range deck. Um, so here we have a starting hand of Steel Tempest, Legion General, Reckoner, and Ionia. So I don't typically keep legion in my hand most of the time um but i'm going to this time because i know i'm against a uh deck that is going to be playing a bunch of creatures so i'm probably going to be needing a legion on turn five that's at least a five five or a six six so 
I'm going to go ahead and mold again those two cards away to try for something more early game. And nice, we got a nice Scaled Snapper. Now, a 2-5 Scaled Snapper isn't really going to do too much here because a lot of their 2-drops is like a 2-2 with toughness, so you can't easily block it. Um, it'll take... Your Scaled Snapper will take two extra... or two blocks instead of just one block like it would normally do for a 2-2. But this is really good at saving you game. You already have one stun, so this is already going to be a 5-5. Five -five. Your Legion General will already be a 5-5. Five -five. And so you really just need any other stun before turn 5, and then your general comes down as a 6-6, six, six, and then you can usually get a free 2 for 1 with him. That's good, we'll do one more for the Demacian deck. Now this hand is really, really nice. You um, don't... Now, you, you absolutely need Yasuo in this uh, matchup, eventually. You don't necessarily need him to slam him on turn 4, but the good thing about this Demacian deck is the only way they kill things is through combat. So if you're not attacking with Yasuo, also never attack with Yasuo against this Demacian deck if they have um, blockers. Because they have so many pump spells and combat tricks, they'll probably just blow you out of the water. But this, you can probably change the Elusive and you can change the Guile out and reroll them to nice, a stun and then a Blade Twirler. So this is really nice. The Culling Shrike can kill, if they play the 2-2, that gives all elites plus one plus one and you play them, you can use this on that you can also use the calling strike just on braum most of the time the elite decks are going to be playing braum garen so you can use the calling strike on braum and it's fairly simple uh you can play the blade twirler on turn two but there's no need to because it's not going to uh, trade with anything effectively so you can usually just save your spell mana on turn two and then turn three you can play this card stun any creature they play but also just keep calling strike open the entire time really that's what you're looking for and then turn four you play yasuo and then just play any spell you've drawn and start stunning stuff so most of the time, you're going to play from behind against the elite deck. They're going to come out the gate swinging. For the first probably three to four turns, you're going to get hit a lot, probably drop to about 10 HP. But then after turn four, it should be fairly easy because you'll have a Yasuo, you'll have more stun cards. Your Yasuo will draw you um, card advantage off of killing units and stunning them at the same time, as well as your mid-game to end-game creatures are a lot bigger than theirs. So their thing is they play consistent creatures, and... Your thing is you stop them from killing you, and then you just drop this really big bomb late game. And the last deck we're going to go over is the Zed Katarina deck, or really any aggro deck that plays Zed, whether it's Zed Jinx or Zed Katarina. So this matchup, uh, or this deck's not very good. I mean, sorry, this hand is not very good. You're going to want to get rid of just about everything. You don't really need Blade Twirler because you're not going to be attacking ever. And this hand is a gajillion times better. So what you're really looking for against the any Zed deck is you're really looking for Culling Strike. You're looking for a way to kill Zed on turn 3. And now you don't have a way to actually kill Zed on turn 3. Scaled Snapper is going to make it harder for your opponent to attack on turn 3. And what you can do is you play Scaled Snapper on turn 3. If your opponent Zed attacks, you can block the Zed and say they have a pump spell. I've had this happen several times when you have a Steel Tempest in your hand. Also, this is a nice combo against Zed. You uh, block with your Scaled Snapper, and then they'll try and pump the Zed to kill your sp your Snapper. You just Steel Tempest it back. And then, so the next turn, they can't effectively attack with Zed without wasting another pump spell or something like that. And so this hand's a lot better. Plus, you have the Elusive creature. You know, your opponent's playing Ionia, so they also probably have Elusives. So this can block an Elusive fairly easily and save you damage that way as well as refill your hand for the mid-game cards. But against the Zed decks, you're really looking for Culling Strike and Scaled Snapper. So that's going to be it for this deck tech. I hope you guys take away from this deck tech, and I hope you guys um, understand how to play the deck more. And maybe if you didn't understand something, or you didn't know what a card was in here for, now you do. Um, I hope that if you guys have any questions, you'll go and ask me in the comments or ask me on my stream. I stream Monday through Friday, starting at 11 a.m. I post YouTube videos every Wednesday, Saturday, so go ahead and follow me on Twitch, subscribe here so you guys don't miss anything, and I'll see you in my next video.